we'd arrived in Kashmir. Just before a camera showed up, I'd watch these police beat and tear gas a group of women protesters. Last night, the forces came to her house and they took away her mother and her father. She and her neighbours and friends and family came to protest. They were just standing in the road. Next thing, the Kashmiri police, security forces came here, started tear gassing them, beating the women, including one very savage woman officer who had a stick. I started beating randomly children, old women, kicking people on the ground. Now we had a camera, I could question them about their actions. Excuse me, is it your policy to beat women protesters? Madam, are you going to hit me with that stick? Madam, were you about to hit me with that stick? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's telling her not to raise her stick to the foreign reporters. Not very good PR. Half a million Indian troops and police are here to crush a 15-year rebellion and keep the Muslim population Indian. Excuse me, sir, could I speak to you about your I'm officer sorry, you who beat these women? Excuse me, there she is, this woman here. Yes, the policewoman I'd seen beating the women viciously ran away from the camera. Hafisa, can I ask you, why did you beat the women with the stick? Why did you beat the women with the stick? Why did you beat the women with the stick? Why did you can't me. Hello, boy. I would soon learn the security forces and the militants take who they want, they torture and they kill. Caught in the middle are the people of Kashmir. The next day, I called on the sisters whose parents had been taken. Around 25 masked men from a special operations group had burst in through the window and grabbed their father, Abdul Hamid Hafiz, an administrator in the postal service. They'd also taken their mother, Atika, and their uncle. He's my father. How did they treat you when they came in? Were they violent towards you? They destroy everything, and um, in front of us, they beat up they beat my father with gun and cock gun in front of him and say we will kill you my father said what's what's my what's my mistake why do you want to kill me they said shut up shut up we don't know where they where they arrested my father we were here and we don't know where is my father and where is my mother tell us where is my mother and father there's a police station not far from here. We're going to go to ask about their mother, try and get her released, or find out at least how she is. <laughs> The girls feared they'd never see their parents again. International human rights groups say 8,000 people taken by the Indian security forces have vanished in Kashmir in the last 15 years. We arrived at the police station. The station house officer, the SHO, denied any involvement. He told the people to try another police station. Can we ask the SHO what's happening? Can we ask the SHO what's happening? Why won't he talk to us? Nobody will speak to us. They won't speak to the people. They say it's not their business. They don't have these captured people. They don't know where the children's parents are. They don't have the mother. They can't do anything, basically. They're saying, go somewhere else. They were shouting, shame, shame. It's 
become a much more ur urgent matter now for the police. The superintendent of police has come here. Obviously, this is becoming very embarrassing for them because we're filming it, and now Kashmiri TV has arrived. It's becoming much more high profile. The people stood their ground. They're releasing the mother. The crowd are pointing three fingers and saying, no, not just her, they want all three, but she's coming out now. <laughs> very happy because they're not being reunited with their parents. It's one thing getting their mother back. What's going to happen to their father now? We went back to the girls' house. Their mother, Atika, had been severely beaten and was often on the brink of unconsciousness. What did they do to your mother? I don't know how they touched, but she, she tell us they tortured her. She insisted she and her husband had done nothing wrong. And where did they torture her? Where was she kept? Women's police station. So that's all women officers. Yeah. So she was tortured by women officers. Yeah. Does she know who they are? Their names or anything? No. How do we know their names? What do they say to your mother? And you think I want to to drive? Before she was interrogated, she'd been taken to see her husband. She said he'd been so badly tortured, he was half dead. She said that when they released her, that the security services said they would also release her husband. No official charges had been made against him. She said they must release her husband now so he can be father to her girls and her brother, who has three children of his own. This is one of them. We learnt the father had been arrested for alleged links to a pro-Pakistan political party. The police said they'd ring when they were releasing him. But the phone never rang. He is still in custody. Until 1947, Kashmir was an independent kingdom ruled by Hindus. When the British left the subcontinent, India and Pakistan each grabbed a share. Pakistan wants the Indian part of Kashmir and has supported Islamic separatists who wage a guerrilla war to end Indian rule. Every morning, Indian troops search for landmines laid by militants the night before. This is the center of Srinagar. It's the most important part and it's very sensitive because National Day is coming up and often attacks are planned for around then, so they're making sure the area is clear. These men had been dragged from their beds in the early hours so their houses could be searched. 95% of the 9 million people who live in the Kashmir Valley are Muslim. Some want Kashmir to belong to Pakistan. Most want independence. The trials of daily life here breed despair. Do you feel humiliated by this? Yes, of course, this is humiliation. So what do you want for Kashmir? Our democracy. We want our business. We want our education, that's important. We want a unique nation, that's important. We don't want Pakistan or India, we want our unique nation, Kashmir. yeah, that's important. Does everybody here want a united Kashmir? Yes, yes, yes. 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 It's hell. Life is hell here. When this thing is over... We have to leave now because there are soldiers standing beside us. They're listening to what we're saying. We don't want to get any of these people in trouble. This part of Srinagar is deserted. It's where Hindus used to live. A small Hindu minority had lived alongside Muslim neighbors here for centuries. All that changed in 1989. By then, India's rigging of local elections had sparked a separatist insurrection and Pakistan.